<laughs> Here we Welcome to another live episode of the Wisco Fanatic Show, where we discuss the Packers, Box, Brewers, Badgers football, and basketball from an optimistic perspective. Wisco Fanatics is brought to you by Cardboard Legacy, Wisconsin's most complete sports card shop. Buy, sell, grade, and consign all at their location in Oshkosh. Welcome back to another episode of Wisco Fanatics. It is a full house. I am back. Uh, I am not shitting my brains out anymore, so that's great. That's a great feeling. Uh, I feel like Jake that again, so it's nice. I uh, left that out. Nope, yeah. nope. Have to tell the people I was dying last week. It was, it was all, it was horrible. Um, but Simon is also here, so we, so back. there's going to be a lot of dumb things said. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I miss you, buddy. Hi, Bryant. How you doing, man? Good. Um, How are you doing? So I teased you guys, and I asked you, did you see the Xavier McKinney tweet yesterday? And you both said no. Mm-mm. Now, I told Tyler before the show because I couldn't help myself. It's so good. It is so good. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. He tweeted this yesterday at 9.52 in the morning, by the way. So he was angry all day. <laughs> Woke up and chose violence or what? He said, done being humble with you MFers. Stop acting like you don't know who I am or what I do. I am him in all capital letters. Who pissed him off? Yeah. So not only did we get the best safety on the market and our weakest skill in our weakest skill position on the team, we got a guy going into his prime who's pissed off. And that is a perfect transition because today we are talking about safeties and corners. So we're going to talk about some safeties. Not going to lie to you, I'm not super impressed. There's a couple guys who I'm like, okay, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. The other guys are kind of like, yeah, he needs a lot of work, Uh, a lot of rough edges around this guy. But one of these guys might be lucky enough to play with Xavier McKinney uh, and learn the ways of being pissed off and really good at football. So without further ado. Wait, hold on. Before we start, isn't that like the perfect match for our – DB room in general. I was say, Jair, yeah, bro, talks a lot. Carrington Valentine talks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like these guys, if we, we could just add more guys, too when we get to yeah. corners. <laughs> to expect some uh, like you know roughing flags and stuff this year when wide receivers finally get sick of being shut down and chirped at to where they finally kind of go full Andre Johnson on someone. I saw a reel the other day and it was like playoff. Jennings and they're talking about Juwan Jennings getting pushed into the Gatorade. <laughs> and I was like, dude, he just got manhandled. Why are you talking about playoff Jennings? <laughs> <laughs> Scott said, what's up from a Minnesota Packers fan? What's up, Scott? Thanks for checking us out while there are other sports games going on. So, all right. Yeah. So we're going to jump into safeties. And Jake, I'm going to go to you first. Jake, who's your number one safety? <sighs> I didn't want to. I really didn't want to. I wanted to put one of my guys up there, but I couldn't. Uh, my number one is Tyler Newbin from Minnesota. I also have Tyler Newbin number one. Uh, Bryant, who is your number one? Yeah, Tyler Newbin. Simon, Same. judging by your your nodding. All right, Tyler Newbin's your guy, so All right. yours. It was, like, super unfortunate he didn't test well because, like, his tape is, like, nothing like it. Uh, I, this is, like, Jake kind of alluded to, like, it's a kind of weak safety class as, as a whole, but I think Tyler Newbin's tape kind of shines, uh, outshines literally everyone. Uh, so he's 22 years old, six foot one, 199 pounds. He only had a 2.91 RAS. Which Did he is, not test in any, in some things at all? Or is it? Just uh, I have to go back and look at this card. I forget what he didn't test. I'll, I'll pull it up while you're talking. All right. Um, <clears throat> So he placed, uh, played most of his stat, snaps as a deep safety um, with over 450 snaps, allowed six receptions on 20 targets, allowed only a 49.6 rating, uh, force, four forced incompletions, and had five interceptions last year. So for pros, he has a great first step, a uh, really quick back pedal, desire to make big hits on the ball carrier, can be an effective blitzer, I think he has pretty elite ball skills, and he has great anticipation uh, for where the ball is going on plays. Uh, Some of the cons that I saw was like he kind of leads with the crown of his helmet 
a little bit too much and gets a little over aggressive in his pursuit angles. And he obviously didn't test well athletically. He did all the he did all of the things too. They get his three cone in there. I, I don't know if I saw that, but his time. three cone is at seven point two seconds. So his oh. score on that is three point seven eight out of ten. That's not great. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that's green on his his relative athletic scorecard is his height. <laughs> yeah. This is yellow and red. Yeah. And if people are excited for him to be a Packer, that's because of that. They say they don't look at that stuff, but if you go back and look at who they've actually drafted, yeah, it's like very, very few that they've drafted anyone even below four. And it's so it, it's not. I, I don't think they. It's not that they, they don't look at like they probably don't look at Raz, but like they have their own metrics or like formula yeah. they follow. That's like yeah. probably pretty close. Yeah, I'm sure every team does. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> All right, let's jump into number two. Jake, who's your number two? Javon Bullard from Georgia. And uh, I'm going to get into him. He's my first guy. Um, If you want to talk about a guy uh, who talks some trash, boy, does he fit in. We were just talking about it. He fits perfectly. Every play he made, he let you know about it after the play, and then he let you know about it before the next play. (laughs) He did not care. He was going to tell you, oh, you didn't catch that ball on me? Guess what? You're going to hear about it in the fourth quarter. I don't care if that was the first play of the game. You're going to hear about it. I love that about him. Um, I love guys with an edge, uh, especially DBs, man. Uh, You're going to give up plays as a DB. It's it's just the the nature, right? But to have that ability to, to, to shut that off and still go out there and be a dog, he barks. It kind of reminds me. Yeah, I was I was sad about Pat Bev the other day when I was watching his film. So this made me feel a lot better. But let's get back into it. 5'10", 198 pounds, a four four forty. Um, he's a very hard hitter. Uh, not afraid to go downhill. Uh, diagnoses run plays and pass plays very well. Uh, he can run with anybody down the field. And in my opinion, he's the best man coverage safety in this draft. I don't think it's I- even close. Uh, he, I was watching some film of him at the senior bowl cause I wasn't lucky enough like Tyler to be able to be there in person, maybe next year, but I was watching some film of him one-on-ones with the, with the tight ends and wide receivers. And he was ab- absolutely locking all of them up, them up in man, in man coverage. So that was phenomenal. Uh, shows his football IQ and route recognition. Uh, he's very good at anticipating plays. Uh, he was the 2023 AP all ACC and he was the 2022 defensive MVP in the peach bowl which they played against Ohio State. You guys remember that hit against Marvin Harrison where he got knocked out? Yeah. That was that was my boy. Cleaned his clock. Nice. And in the national championship, he was also the defensive game MVP for Georgia. So this guy's a, a big game player, big playmaker, and I think he would look good in green and gold. Why not? Let's just take all the Georgia defenders and put them in Green Bay, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, those eventually have the Georgia defense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my number two, I also have Javon Bullard. Uh, Brian, who do you have it too? This isn't me by, being biased. I know he's one of my guys. He's a smart surprise you, but that's where I put Jaden Hicks. For me. I'm not mad at it. I, I'm not mad at it either. I like Hicks. So talking about size and speed, I know at first Jaden Hicks didn't run well, but at his pro day, he increased that. So Jaden Hicks has measurements at six two and a half, two 215 pounds, and around a four four nine forty. So his relative relative ex- athletic score was like eight point nine four something around that way uh, area right there. So, yeah. um, so elite, you know, pretty good si- elite size I would say for that position. Not too big, you, you know. I know there's a safety that's like six four, and then people are like, I don't know about that. It's a little too big, but uh, Jaden Hicks is right where you're. You probably want the max size, I would say, uh, and good speed. He's a versatile player. Uh, he has high fo- uh, plays with high football IQ. Um, he's very good at anticipating, excuse me, anticipating the play, um, which allows him to be and being being able to anticipate. He's able to be aggressive, especially in the support against the run and blitzing the passer. Uh, he has the physicality to be a safety that's close to the line and a box safety. So I think he'd be an excellent complement to McKinney. Um, so I'm, I'm this is someone I do hope we get, can get in the second um, round. So he does need to work on his open field tackling a little bit and the angles he takes. And there's a little concern with his, um, you know, straight 
a vertical speed, but I don't think that's uh, – he kind of showed he has that speed on his pro day. Uh, he had that's the, almost four- like a consistent thing across this whole class that a lot of these guys don't have, like the, the straight downhill, you know, 4-3 something, 40 speed. Yep. So, and he was a, he was, he pretty much, he only played two years, uh, had four sacks in college. So he can get after the quarterback. He had three interceptions, uh, you know, so I, I, he's just really versatile. And I think he would be a really good compliment to uh, McKinney, to be honest. Yeah, I like it. Uh, Simon, who's your number two? Cam Kitchens. Three. Three. Really that high, huh? I like this tape a lot. It's just I, like if he tested, athletically better then i feel like he'd be a lot <laughs> on <laughs> right, my bad yeah that's yeah that's jake's <laughs> my bad that's jake's other guy all right jake who's your number three who i'm going to talk about right now um yeah, i was flipping a coin between him and, and bullock to be honest with you but cam kitchens makes me a little bit upset uh you watch his film and he shows the ability to be an elite center fielder at times and he shows really good range uh, goes and gets the ball, and it, it seemed like when Miami needed a turnover, he would go and get the dang ball, right? Like, hey, we need the ball back, you know, so we can have a chance to win. Go get the ball, please. And he would do that, but he would also take some terrible angles, especially when trying to tackle, which none of us want to deal with, right? We don't we don't want people taking bad angles and missing tackles. We've seen enough of that. Yep. Um, and see. then every once in a while, you know, he – Miami blitzed them a few times last year, and he looked good doing that. They put him down into the box every once in a while because he's not small, but he's not overly big, 5'11", 209. I mean, that's pretty good size. Uh, he's got, you know, an NFL body already. But they would put him in the box, and he would just chuck a tight end and make a play uh, on the boundary one-on-one with a running back. And you're like, oh, okay, there, there might be something here. And then he would go to try to tackle a running back, and I thought he was playing powder puff football for a second. And I'm like <laughs> – can you please just decide if you want to be good? I don't know what's happening anymore. Who am I, what are you the same player? Did you switch with like your twin or something? I don't know what's going on. He's so inconsistent in so many areas that it's hard to judge him. But if if we're judging him off of potential, he's the third best safety in this draft, in my opinion. That was my bottom line. It's like, I feel that way so much about so many of these players and my list is it reflects that because my the safeties are all over the place I, I was gonna say that before we began i wouldn't be surprised if each one of us had something completely different yeah yeah i, I mean when we, when we get to my number three it's gonna be interesting uh he simon who's your number three i have javon bullard number three okay uh brian who's your number three javon bullard okay here we go. My number three, I have Dadrian Taylor Demerson. Oh. So, wow. again, in a weird safety class. I like it. Dadrian Taylor Demerson from Texas Tech. He is 5'10", 197. He does have a high, a high RAS at 8.87. He ran a 4'4", uh, He allowed 20 receptions on 35 targets. That's 57.1%. He allowed a 65.0 passer rating. He had six passes defensed, four interceptions, and only a 10.2 missed tackle percentage. So we talk about it all throughout the season all the time about making tackles. He's actually a reliable tackler. That's honestly when we're talking about anything defensively, tackling is going to be one of my main factors always. Mm -hmm. So looking at Taylor Demerson, he also has some versatility, I think. He played uh, 485 safety snaps. He played 202 slot snaps, and he played 113 snaps in the box. He turned that into 79 tackles, and on 16 pass rushes, he had eight pressures and a sack. Pretty good. Uh, in 2022, he had five passes defensed, three interceptions, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. And this is my biggest thing. This is why I have him so high, because I do think he is a guy who can be like the center fielder and can be a responsible run defender and box defender. That's why I have him so high on my list. He makes good adjustments. He can hit hard. And he's also played 2,859 career snaps, so he's experienced as well. Honestly, the only things that I would change about him 
is make him three inches taller so he could cover tight ends more effectively. I think that's why I have him a little lower. Yeah, like, if he was six one, yeah, he'd probably be my number one to be honest with you. Hmm. If he was six one, say two oh five instead of five ten one ninety seven, he'd probably be my number one safety. I respect. You. All right, Jake, who is your number four? That's where I have Kalen Bullock out of USC. Okay, Simon, who's your number four? I have uh, Jaden Hicks. Okay. Uh, Brian, who's your number four? That's where I have DTD. So, oh, all right. Well, I'm not super far off. I'm not feeling crazy for it. Oh, you have Cam Kitchens down. really fucking low then. I do. I, I yeah, really I do. do. <laughs> I wow. told Jake I was this close to being able to put him lower. I don't, uh, I don't it's, it's a weird and not exciting safety class. Yeah. It's, it's um, weird. Number four is also where I have Jaden Hicks. Um, Jake, who's your number five? That's where I have DTD. All right, I'm done to call him DTD. I'm with that. That's a lot easier to say than Dadrian Taylor Demerson. Yeah, I was. I wasn't saying all that. <laughs> I'm with it, Simon. Who's your number five? Number five is Kalen Bullock. Okay, uh, Bryant. Number five. That's where I have Kalen Bullock. So right. for me, uh, that's one of my guys. My other guy is Kalen Bullock. He's 6'2", 188, around a four four eight forty. So another guy that displayed, you know, really good size and speed mix. Uh, strong tackler. He's so he's not scared to be physical. Another thing about him is he has elite ball skills. So, God damn it. <laughs> anyway, so he's um, so he over his three college games uh, seasons, excuse me, he had nine interceptions. Two of those he turned for uh, return for touchdown. So one season he had five interceptions. Um, so he's good at reading the quarterback and has placed uh, strong play recognition. However, one of the things he will get beat um, his every year his quarterback rating given up kind of went up a little bit so he's he's more of a guy that's going to need someone that has strong coverage ability around him so that's why i think he could be possibly a good fit because he's more of the ball hawking type uh, and he's gonna get you know stick his nose in there and uh hit somebody so you know that's not a bad thing you know there's a spot on the team for someone like that um so he can play in man in zone coverage as well and he's good on special teams that was another thing is um he he'll come in right away and play on special teams that's you know he plays special teams for usc so and then um though you know he does lack the elite explosiveness uh you know so and he needs to improve the angles he takes to make those tackles so he'll get beat some but he is someone that's probably gonna you know get a couple picks a year uh maybe force a cup fumble or two because he's gonna be hitting people with his you know with the size and speed so you know kind of kind of chalk for the safety class to be honest there's i really don't feel like there's anyone that's like you know, we all had Tyler Newbin first, but I don't feel like there's anyone that just strides ahead of anyone with like a time. like a must get. That's why, and that's why I feel like getting McKinney was so important once you actually start yeah. to kind of deep dive into the safety class. And I know Simmons is still out there, and I would not be mad if they just said, you know what, we don't if if someone we don't want doesn't fall to us in the draft, like don't reach for somebody. I would absolutely still be interested in drafting one, even if they were to add Simmons. I, you add yeah, Simmons I on a one year deal. We don't reach. I'm good with it. You add Simmons on a one year deal and draft somebody like Adrian Taylor Demison in like the third or fourth round, and you have Xavier McKinney and Justin Simmons to to play and then show him the ropes. Like, I I would love that for the Packers safety room. At this point, Simmons is going to get a really cheap contract somewhere too. Yep. Yep. Someone's going to give him a real cheap contract. Why not? Why not bring him to a place yep. where he'd have a, a competitive team and yep. a, a really good person next to him? Yep. And he he's gonna get like he's not gonna have to worry about like playing time at all. Like he's gonna get playing time. And True. he's played in the cold before. That's yeah. the main thing for me. He's played outside in the cold, so that'd be sure. another check mark for him. All righty. So my number five, that's where I have my other guy. I originally was gonna cover Cole Bishop because I liked him at the senior bowl, but I had somebody else that was at the senior bowl um, that I ended up ranking a little bit higher that I decided to cover instead. And that's where I have Kitan Oladapo. Oladapo, Oladapo. Oladapo. I've heard it pronounced multiple Oladapo, ways. Yeah. Um, so Oladapo is from Oregon State. He's 6'2", 216. So he is big. Put together. Big. Um, he had – this is – to me, this is an important thing to mention. He's played three straight seasons of not missing a game. 13 games in three straight seasons. Uh, he's another guy that can play all over the field. Looking at his snap breakdowns, 
He played 292 snaps in the box, 174 snaps at safety, and 278 snaps in the slot. So just a really balanced um, snap count across the field. Uh, He played two of his best games against Washington and USC. So playing well against good competition, I feel, is worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. Uh, He allowed 21 receptions on 36 targets. That's 58.3%, which is pretty low, and a 61.3 passer rating, which is also low. In 2023, he had seven pass breakups, two interceptions, and two forced fumbles. Um, Over his last three seasons, he's broken up 22 passes. Uh, In his career, he also has six and a half sacks, and he's played 2,651 snaps. So, again, another another guy who's pretty experienced on the field. Um, His missed tackle percentage is 12.1. It's not super high, but that's where you start getting into that gray area. I feel like once you start getting over like 11, 12, 13%, once you start to get over that, that's where it's like, okay, that's a little high. So being around 12%, that's still in the gray area, but not bad. Um, my only my only downside with a lot of Poe, again, just like a lot of other guys on here, it's he's not overly fast. And that comes some of that comes with his size, but um, it's it's just the nature of this class as far as safeties go. You're either smaller and faster or you're bigger and slower, and that's just kind of where we're at. Jake, who is your number six? That's where I am, Jaden Hicks. All right. Uh, Simon, who's your number six? I have Cole Bishop, number six. Okay. Brian, who's your number six? I have Cole Bishop, number six. Okay. Um, six is where I have Cam Kinchins. So hmm. not crazy low, but he's lower for me. Uh, Jake, who's your number seven? That's where I have Katan Ola Dapo. You've done worse. Dude, that name is – I don't know how to say that. There's so many It's not that bad. I kind of wish his first name was Kai Dude, Dan. Your English language like... is bad, bro. Have you yeah, the English language alive? is bad. Like, the word pneumonia, does it even need a P? Like, why is the P in the word pneumonia? Why? So you hate the word pterodactyl, too? Yeah, why, why is there a K in knife? Can knife? <laughs> why is there a K in knife? The English language sucks. <laughs> All right. Uh, next week's uh, show with running backs and linebackers is going to be brought to you in Latin. <laughs> uh, Simon, who is your number seven? I'm gonna go Sesame Street. Uh, I have this Scion Vaki. All right, go ahead. Uh, Scion Vaki, 22 years old. He's 5'11, 210 pounds, 8.54 RES. Uh, so he's like one of the weird two way players that you see nowadays. He had over 500 yards from scrimmage on offense, playing uh, running back, and he also played a little bit of Wildcat and scored five touchdowns. Uh, He kind of recently had like a – he had a press conference where he's like, I want to play defense. Like I want to go out there and hit people. He he was also smart and probably realized that running backs don't last in the NFL. Smart. (laughs) <laughs> he got he got thrust into that spot because of some injuries. So yeah, I give him all the credit in the world for for stepping. I mean, up he played he, well. He did. It's like yeah, he okay, played well. I'll be straight up honest with you. When I'm watching, like I was watching Utah highlights, like I was watching their like game. So I was watching like Utah versus other teams, and I was watching like condensed games or whatever. And I'm like, I'm seeing running plays. And I'm like, who the fuck is number twenty eight? Like they don't have a number twenty eight running back. I'm like, who <laughs> is that? And then I finally saw his name on the back of his jersey. I'm like, no, <laughs> there is no way that that's who that is. And yeah, it's it's Vaki. Yeah. So uh, on defense, though, because he is coming out as a safety, he played over 300 snaps at deep, and then he also had a hundred box and uh, slot snaps a piece. Allowed 20 catches on 29 targets with a rating of 88. Um, he forced one incompletion and one and had one interception this last year. Uh, he's a very willing and capable hitter and run support, and he's very good at blowing up screens. Uh, so that means he has good anticipation on plays. Uh, he has good ball skills and tracks the ball well down downfield. Uh, good job of reading the QB's eyes and reacting and quick feet and excellent change of direction. Uh, some of the cons are he's inconsistent getting off blocks. And he's tighten his angles in pursuit and tends to over pursue players a little bit. Yeah. All right. Uh, Brian, who is your number seven safety? My number seven is Katan Oladapo. All right. Seven is where I have Cole Bishop. 
Uh, Jake, who's your number eight? That's where I have uh, Bo Braid. Okay. So, uh, Simon, number eight. Now we're all over the place. We are all over the place. The consensus <laughs> the for this is going to be a nightmare. I the, yeah, the consensus is going to be. We're going to have so... like a consensus, like top four. <laughs> uh, number eight, I have Tyke Smith. Okay. Uh, he didn't make my top 12, so here we are. <laughs> um, Brian, who is your number eight? That's where I have Cam Kitchens. Okay. I told Jake I was like, I could have, that was this close to putting him at number eight when we were doing uh, pre show stuff. So, uh, number eight is where I have Kalen Bullock. Uh, Jake, who's your number nine? Cole Bishop. Uh, Simon, nine. Malik Mustafa. Okay. Bryant, nine. Bo Braid. Uh, number nine is where I have Sione Vake. So, Jake, who's your number 10? Tyke Smith. Uh, Simon, 10. Katan Oladapo. Uh, Bryant, 10. James Williams. 10 is where I have Josh Proctor just, from Ohio just State. My list. Um, Jake, who's your number 11? That's where I have Malik Mufasa. Mustafa? Mustafa. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking Lion King. Thinking Lion King. Thinking Lion King. <laughs> Lion King. <laughs> Lion. Okay. <laughs> if you had just like played it and been like, yeah, Mufasa, that's what I said. And like, actually like act like you were pretending to do it on purpose you said it was such conviction you're like it's well, I, I try to like quick look before you ask me and for some reason mufasa just popped in my brain <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. a meme waiting to happen dude i'm telling you <laughs> all right simon who's your number 11 are you gonna put mustafa next to his name or I'll put mufasa next to his name i'll, I'll, I'll put it in like right in parentheses have... yeah. or uh, in quotation marks uh number 11 dvt D T D, D T. All right, and Bryant, who's your Jaylen number eleven? Simpson. Okay, uh, number eleven is where I have Dominique Hampton from Washington. Mm. Uh, Jake, who is your number twelve? Echo Dominique Hampton. All right, Simon twelve. Bo Braid. Bryant twelve. Tyke Smith. Twelve is where I also have Bo Braid. So. Yeah, guys, you can uh, send me your your uh, <laughs> lists here, and we'll see if we have enough players outside of number one to uh, have a consensus. <laughs> I think we have a consensus up to, like, number six. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Or it'll be, like, a consensus where it'll be, like, like how I do the consensus is, like, if you, like, the I, add up yeah. where everybody's ranks are. So, like, if we have ones across the board, you get a four. Yeah. So, like, if Jake has two, Simon has two, and then Jake Bryant and I have 12, it's going to be 28, and it's going to be like, okay, yep, yeah, all right, well, where that, that's where that's going to go. So, <laughs> What do you do if three people have one person, one doesn't? Uh, if, it, if anybody's outside of the top 12, I just give them a 13 automatically. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Hmm. I don't spend too much time being like, no, I need everybody's top 20 so that I can get everybody's... <laughs> players that they had on here at all yeah i, I don't like go that far if you're not little... in somebody's top 12 you just get a 13 cornerbacks i feel like are gonna be a little easier to deal with yeah see now i could see why you'd say that <laughs> but we'll we'll see you wait, um, i don't think right. you're gonna like my number one i tyler's gonna like it though i know that for sure wait why why do you think i'm not gonna like your number one i don't think you're gonna i think there's it. gonna be a difference of opinion that's i'm interested well, in yeah i think so too okay well, straight up, let's just get it going. Simon, who's your number one cornerback? Nate Wiggins. Oof. I love it. I'm not I mad at it. that, actually. I love Nate Wiggins. I love, I, I, Green Bay will not take Nate Wiggins, he's, but I love him. He's, he's my guy. He's, I love him, too. He's I love too him. thin. When I get to him, I love Nate Wiggins. I love Nate Absolutely. Wiggins. He's too small. He, his when you were talking, so good. When you were, when you were talking about attitude, when you guys were talking about when yeah. was talking about his guy on the safety room, I'm like, Bro, just wait till we get to Nate Wiggins. I love Nate Wiggins. He he was my favorite to watch. Interesting. All right, Brian, who's your number one cornerback? Uh, that's where I... Quinion Mitchell. All right. Jake, I don't who's your number one? Either. My number one. You want to say it at the same time? <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Cooper, Cooper DeGene. DeGene. Yeah, no. Cooper DeGene's my number one. Um, He does everything. He does all of... All of the things that you could do on a football field, he does them. He does them well. He plays corner. He's getting looked at as a safety. He was a punt returner. He was covering punts. Uh, 
uh, kick coverage. Uh, he, he does everything. Uh, in high school, he lettered three years in a row in football, basketball, and baseball, and he also ran track. Did you watch his ba- uh, basketball clips? The I've seen ball. Them. He can dude, ball. This guy is good at everything. He's I, I am 100% certain that he's one of those annoying people that, you know, you, you show him a board game for the first time, and then they win, and you're like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of those. I could tell already. He He is a winner. Uh, 6'1", 203, so he's got size to him. He had 30 tackles, 7 assists, 10 stops, 3 pass breakups, 2 interceptions, and a 40.6 quarterback rating over 10 games. Uh, Consensus All-American. He was a finalist for the Jim Thorpe and the Bruno Nagurski Award. Uh, Great run defender. He he went one-on-one. I saw this twice in the the game I watched against Northwestern. He went up one-on-one versus their right tackle and one in the run game, stretching the run game out and just going low and, and attacking the hip. He did it perfectly. He is a natural zone defender, and he has great closing speed. He's – I'm telling you, this guy's just good at everything. Like, the other guys are, like, elite specialists at things. He is the most well-rounded, in my he, opinion. He had, his, he had his pro day, right, like, recently? It's Monday. Or, like, yep. he, yeah, it's that's coming up. Okay, Monday I was waiting for Friday. that to come out. Yeah, so, that could have skewed me some, depending on what those numbers end up being. It will be interesting. But if I was going to explain him using – using, you know, words here. I would say physicality, instinctive play, and ball hawk. Those are the three words, four words, I would use to describe Cooper DeGene. Say that passer rating again, because that's what made him my number one. A 40.6 quarterback rating over 10 games. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's not normal. Also, the year before, he had five interceptions, three of them. You saw his punt return skills come to for fruition because he returned them for touchdowns. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. that that Like I said, that passer rating is what sold him as my number one. But number two is where I have Quinion Mitchell. So, Bryant, who is oh. your number two? That's where I have Terry on Arnold. Okay. Ooh. I like it. I like it. Uh, Simon, who's your number two? I have Quinion Mitchell. Okay. Uh, 22 years old, six foot tall, 195, uh, pound, 195 pounds. Uh, 9.75 RES, uh, played 677 snaps on the outside corner, allowed a completion percentage of 43.5%, a passer rating of 51.1, 290 yards for 17 incompletions, Jeez. and one interception in 2023. Uh, he was excellent in both man and uh, zone coverage. He's just a really good athlete. Above average body control, explosiveness, and top speed. Uh, very smooth back pedal. Uh, uses explosiveness to break on the ball very well. Uh, he's very good at baiting quarterbacks in the throwing where they don't think he's going to catch up. Um, excellent anticipation and off coverage. Uh, sometimes he can lack some instincts in zone coverage and can be over aggressive against double move. And he's inconsistent in press coverage. All righty. Jake, who do you have number two? That's where I have Quinion Mitchell. All right. Number three is where I have Terry on Arnold, and he was actually the first corner that I scouted, and I dibsed him in our chat right away. Um, I wanted Terry on Arnold, and I could have seen any of these top three being in any order, to be honest, mm-hmm. with Cooper DeGene, Quinion Mitchell, and Terry on Arnold. Mm-hmm. So Terry on Arnold is from Alabama. He's six foot, 189. He had a 9.14. RAS. Uh, he was first team all SEC, first team all American. Uh, he allowed 41 receptions on 79 targets. That's 51.9%. Like, stop, stop throwing the ball at him. Like, you're, you're barely completing half your passes when you throw the ball in his direction. <laughs> he had 13 pass breakups and five interceptions. And on those five interceptions, he had 69 return yards. Nice. <laughs> had to put that in there. Uh, he also had six and a half tackles for loss and allowed a 50.7 passer rating. Uh, he's fantastic at turning his head back to the ball uh, in, in coverage. He has great closing speed. He's very good play recognition when it comes to runs and screens. Um, an 11.1 missed tackle percentage. That's pretty low. I will take that. 
Um, he had 11 pass rushes that yielded four pressures and a sack. Uh, as far as cons or things that I would change, he did have two bad games in the middle of the season. Otherwise, he was very consistent. Um, there's, you know, we've talked about some of these def- defensive backs, especially the safeties more so, where guys can have really good games and really bad games and really good games, really bad games. Terry Arnold has been pretty consistent outside of, like I said, the two bad games uh, that he had in the middle of the season. And then similar to what Simon was saying about Quinion Mitchell, he's not the best at being close to the line of scrimmage. So I know one of the main things that people want to get away from now that Joe Barry is gone is playing off the line of scrimmage. That is generally what Terry on Arnold is better at. So Bryant, who is your number three? Mine is Nate Wiggins. Okay. Uh, Simon, number three. Terry on Arnold. Okay. Uh, Jake, number three. A corner of that best fits Green Bay, Nate Wiggins. <laughs> All right. Number four, that's where I have Nate Wiggins. That's my other guy. So <laughs> Nate Wiggins, 6'1", 173 pounds. I'd like him to get that weight up a little bit. Um, from Clemson, he is a 9.41 RAS because he ran a 4.28 40-yard dash. That boy fast. <laughs> yeah, he's fast. <laughs> Insane speed. So he allowed <laughs> – this is just another one of those guys. Just to, just don't throw at him. 18 receptions on 41 targets. That's a 43.9 completion percentage. He allowed a 44.4 passer rating. And that's where, like, when Simon said that he has Nate Wiggins number one, I can see it. Yeah. And I, and I like that. I like I'm, I'm totally down with it. Uh, he's really good at jumping routes. Mm-hmm. He and this is what I wrote in my notes about him. He is a straight jacket in coverage. Um, he's played two of his best games versus his best competition, which would be North Carolina, where Drake May is coming from. He's going to be a, probably a top five pick, and Florida State, who went undefeated. And you're talking about Keon Coleman, a wide receiver who could also end up in the first round. Yep. Uh, he was first team all ACC. I will say, I think he needs some work in zone coverage and against the run. Uh, he did miss 13.3% of tackles, and he missed two games in the 2023 season. Um, and like I said, at 173 pounds, I would like to see him add a little bit of weight and maybe add some production. So in 2023, he had four pass breakups and two interceptions. However, in 2022, he did have 13 pass breakups. So better in 2022. Um, and again, that could be one of those things where it's like, if you don't hear a cornerback's name, that's a good thing because it means you're not throwing in their direction, which, like I said, if, if he's a straight jacket in coverage, eventually teams are going to stop throwing at him because there's just no way to throw with the ball. Now, with Nate Wiggins, he plays, and this would be in all capitals, very aggressive. Nate Wiggins is very aggressive. So will not shock me if he has a penalty problem in his rookie season in the NFL. Now, I could see that being a pro. We've, we talked about having attitude in the secondary room. We have Jair Alexander and Xavier McKinney on the same team now. We're just talking about bringing Justin Simmons in, if something like that. Or Nate Wiggins, who I think is probably the, the biggest attitude in the defensive backs out of all of them. Um, it'd be very interesting to see, and it would make our secondary mean, and I'm here for it. So he was also my – his attitude was the reason that I have him as my number four, as my tiebreaker over my number five. So when we get to that point, so uh, Jake, who is your number five? Uh, my number five. Uh, Kool Aid. Skip four. Oh, yeah. did I skip four? Oh yeah, I started yeah. four by myself. Sorry, Jake. Yeah. Who's your four? Uh, my four. That's where I have Arnold. Okay. Uh, Simon, who's your four? Kool Aid. Okay, that's who I have. Yeah. Well, let me let me get Brian's number four first. Cooper DeGene. Okay. Five is where I have Kool-Aid McKinstry and looking at Kool-Aid and Nate Wiggins, it was the attitude that separated Wiggins above him for me. So, uh, Jake, who's your number five? Uh, that's why I have Kool-Aid. I will say, does it, who has Kool-Aid? Oh, never mind. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I, I read a really cool thing about him, so I'll let you go first. Okay. Was that the Kool-Aid thing you did at the combine? No. <laughs> It's Simon, actually like it actually like five. means something in football terms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Simon, who's your number five? Cooper DeGene. Okay. Uh Bryant, who's your number five? And that's where I have Kool-Aid McKinstry. Okay. 
So six foot, one hundred ninety nine pounds, four four seven forty. What I want to say, I mean, this is the best name in the draft, right? So how much, how fun would it be for him to like get a pick six? All the other defensive linemen line up. I don't know. There's some really cool fucking oh, names. Oh yeah, <laughs> let me. <laughs> How awesome would that be? Right, he's got him. If you got to get like one of the, you got to get like one of the paper sheets and yeah. have him burst through it, dude. Like I'm, I want to draft him just because I know that would be a touchdown celebration. Okay, it would be amazing. Just on your name point, really quick. Let me throw one other name out there that I think is really badass. Ennis Rakestraw. Yeah, that's a good name. Yeah. He's on. Kool-Aid. He's on your guys' list, right? Yeah. Now yeah. Kool Aid is a nickname. So really? Little... That's oh, wow. interesting. Sorry, uh, Brian. Go ahead. Yeah, so Kool Aid is a nickname, but it's still a sweet nickname. Anyways, uh, yeah, the, the whole celebration would just be sick to have happen. You know what I mean? So, um, so he's showing the ability to switch up, uh, switch up and play both outside and sliding in the slot without missing a beat. Um, he's really good in co- uh, good good zone coverage quarterback. Um, he does well reading and reacting to plays. He also has the agility, aggressiveness, and quickness to utilize the bump and run. Um, also, another player that you know can get up and attack a ball. He only had two um, interceptions, but uh, in his uh, time in college, but he has a you know fair number of pass breakups and pass defenses as well. Uh, one of the things that really I f- think is uh, good about him is he- he's like a field general. He's really good at communicating with his teammates, putting him in, telling him to get to, you know, lined up correctly. So he's not shy about that. Um, his last, last season, he allowed a completion rate of just 48%. And a pass rating of 73.1, so that's really respectable. Uh, he can struggle a little bit against the deep ball, and kind of like um, Tyler was saying with Nate Wiggins, is I think the first year he might struggle with some flags because at the, like the breaks of routes, he seems to he's really handsy. He likes to get his hands on people, and it's probably going to draw some flags until he kind of you know he goes through our drill where we put boxing gloves on him or whatever we do. So, but but yeah, that's pretty much what I have for Kool Aid. Okay, I think there's a few, honestly, a few corners like that that are kind of a little grabby. Um, Steve said, PFF says he is assignment sure. Yes, right. he he knows where to be at all yeah. times on the on the field. So, so another added. another cool name, real quick, Jamari yeah. Thrash. I know we're not really not going to. I, in, like, I know I receivers. like Jamari Thrash. I, I love actually that liked him as a wide receiver when I was yeah. doing some uh, some so article Brian, writing you, earlier you, in the year. You did touch on what I wanted to say, but the quote that I read was that he's called a coach on the field. Yeah. So I really love that from him, honestly. That's, yeah. that's a big thing, especially when you think about who his coach was, Nick Saban. His yeah. weight holds a little little weight to it, you know? So yeah. being the leader of that defense means something. This would be another pick that I would be very happy with in the first round. Yep. You know what else would be cool? If he took Kool-Aid packs out of his socks and started throwing them in the stands. <laughs> What flavor do you think you would have in there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a good uh, question. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love uh, me some no, orange Kool-Aid. Maybe uh, Michael orange. asked, is Kool-Aid's injury any concern? Fr- fruit punch, man. Fruit p- Gross, dude. Grape all the way. Oh, my God. Kool-Aid is just gross. Uh, anyways. All right. Well, you, you take four. L's all around. <laughs> Michael, Michael asked if uh, Kool-Aid's injury was any concern to you guys. No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think so. They, they don't seem very concerned about that. I think he'll be ready to roll for the season. So, and he ran his forty time on it. So, yeah, that's fair. That's a good point. Uh, Steve said, "Didn't Kool Aid start as a true freshman for Saban?" I believe so. Yes, he's played for three years. Yeah, that's impressive. Okay, number six, I have Cam Hart. Mm. Uh, Jake, who is your number wow. six? That's why I have TJ Tampa. I like it. Uh, Simon, who is... That's another cool name, yeah. (laughs) Simon, who is your number six? Maybe this won't be as easy. (laughs) I have Ennis Raystraw. All right. Well, I mean, our top five will be easy. (laughs) 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 We're just doing top five. I don't have have heart on my list. (laughs) He he just missed mine. Okay. Um, Brian, who is your number six? That's where I have TJ Tampa, my other guy. So... Um, so TJ Tampa, another guy has really good size, speed, uh, six foot one, 189 pounds, four, four, five. Um, this would probably, when I was looking at it, if we can get him in the second round, this would probably be one of my favorite picks of the draft, to be honest. A uh, great combination of size and speed has long arms and upper body strength, uh, making him a really good, strong press corner. Uh, you know, he's good at flipping his hips and turn with a, 
uh, running with the wide receiver and put himself in a really good position to maintain close coverage and make plays on the ball. Uh, he's not afraid to get involved in run defense. He can thrive in both man and zone schemes. Uh, last year, he played 774 snaps, only allowed a QB rating of 54.8. So um, really just kind of another guy that needs to tighten up his uh, technique when tackling, and he can get caught play, playing too aggressive again. So, and that's kind of a theme we're seeing with a lot of these guys, but I really like TJ Tampa. I think he would be a phenomenal second round pick. Yeah, I like that one a lot. The Packers hit home runs in the second round, so. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't pick them in the third. We're good. Yeah. Well, they killed Tucker that. Craft is they killed that. Now. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope we, uh, I wouldn't mind if, if we package like both of our threes and move way up early in the second round and have like three second round draft picks. I'd be. I'm down. Totally, totally okay with that. Yeah, I mean, yep, I'm, I'm down. Whatever Goot wants to do, I trust him now. <laughs> yeah. People. Or trade back out of the first and pick up an extra second. Yeah. Have four second rounders. <laughs> well, what I want lit, to day two would be f- oh, so lit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah we'll just be like, all right, guys, we'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow night. Every you know five minutes when the Packers are making picks. I don't think they could ever flip it to a next year's first, but if they could somehow flip this year's first to a next year's first, like say like Kansas City wants to trade up and they're like, no, let's just, you know, give us your next year's first or whatever, which they probably wouldn't do. But it'd be awesome if we're at the draft next year and we have two. They did it for the Saints draft. in what twenty eighteen. They did. Yeah. So, uh, Steve said he saw a YouTube mock today where we traded up for Terry on Arnold at like nineteen. Gave up. If a he third falls there, I would be all for forty one to pick up another third. Yeah. Huh. Not opposed to it. I would do the same deal for a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson, for yeah. example. Yeah. I'd do the same thing there. Okay. So, number seven, that's where I have Mike Sainra still from Michigan. Uh, Jake, who is your number seven? That's where I have Max Melton. Okay. All right. Uh, that's that's my other guy. Uh, obviously, outside of uh, having two brothers on the same team, uh, which would be pretty cool, uh, the iron sharpens iron and all that kind of stuff, it, which he has said in interviews. Um, he's an elite athlete. He's in a 99th percentile in a broad jump. 94th percentile in his vertical, and he ran a 43940. This guy just straight up is a, is a great athlete. Uh, both of his parents were D1 athletes at Rutgers. His brother obviously went to Rutgers and is now an NFL wide receiver, and now he's trying to be an NFL cornerback. So, whatever those parents got going on, man, they're just they're just <laughs> making well. NFL babies, man. Um, but he's physical and aggressive in the run game. Doesn't shy away uh, from from running backs running at him, and he shows the ability to be disruptive in the backfield, which I really love from a corner. Um, still to this day, one of my favorite highlights is Jair running over uh, Adam Thielen and just dude, absolutely... that's that highlight is that play is goaded. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorite plays of all time to watch. Yeah. I watch that on YouTube consistently. <laughs> <laughs> I just look up random sports highlights all the time, and that's one of them. Uh, but Max Melton showed the ability and not not afraid to do that kind of stuff. Uh, He's a very high motor guy, strong ball skills, and he has good size and length to be effective in coverage against taller wide receivers. I saw him matched up against big guys a lot. Um, And you know what? We keep talking about these these guys being grabby. I think that's just an attribute that these college guys have, right? Because when you get beat, what's a human reaction to grab? So all these guys, I think, have that problem. I think every single one. I think there's NFL corners. I mean – do you guys remember watching Charles Woodson? That guy got away with murder every once in a while. <laughs> but because he was Charles Woodson, they let it go, right? So I think that's just a human reaction. So that's probably something that he could work on. I think all corners could work on it. But other than that, man, I mean, I actually like Max Melton outside of, like I said, having his brother on the team already. I think he'd be a great fit in Green Bay. Has has an NFL attitude as well. So having his brother in the NFL has probably helped with that. But – you could tell he, he carried one of the first well. players that I talked to at the Senior Bowl, and he was just like super fun to talk to. Also, I loved his answer about you know what he said about his brother and realizing because he really realizes it's just not it's just not going to be easy for him. You know, he's going to have to try his ass off. You know what I mean? Even though he has all the athletic ability, everyone around him has similar athletic ability. The so, the, the talent him. jump from college to the NFL. That's where like as much time as we spend putting into the draft and like understanding players and stuff like that, we we will end up going through probably 200 players and scouting them in depth and 10 of them will end up being prominent NFL players that then down the line, the four of us will be like, okay, we understand these guys because we scouted them. 
But there's going to be a lot of these guys that we scout that end up out of the league in three years, four years, playing in the UFL or the Canadian Football League. And that that talent jump is real, and that's why we'll say things like the draft is a crapshoot. It really is. It really what do you is. mean? I thought the game was slow. Didn't the, didn't oh. the Chicago Bear fan. I mean, uh, oh. good enough to be a fan, probably. Um, the game is slowing down. Huh? I think. Uh, I think people. The thing people miss too is like we don't get to see the intangibles of the players. Like we don't get to interview them, sit down with them, see what kind of person they are, what kind of work ethic they got. Well, I mean, you did a I'm little bit, but I got like a, I got like a two, like not, not, not much, not as much as like scouts see. So like when people are like, Oh, why did this person fall? Like there are probably reasons why they fell. Yeah. And Rasheed Rice, does that ring a bell? I <laughs> mean, yeah. the guy, I mean, I'm not trying to dog him cause we don't know all the details, but, there was there's talks about it. There's a reason he fell to the second round. That guy's a first round talent. That guy's amazing. He's so good. I but, liked him so much last year. Dude, too. I feel yeah. like these yeah. actors do monster. so well, like addressing these kinds of issues too. Because there's there's just not like the first player that we've all liked for the Packers. We're like maybe we can get this guy, and then also the next year or two years later, he's getting arrested. I don't um, remember kind of the last time we had like an actual issue was like John Jolly. Yeah, right. No, he couldn't stay off the lean. But um, <laughs> I didn't think we were going to say it out loud. <laughs> I mean, that's last true. Time somebody say it. <laughs> he was on, he was on the purple stuff. But like, um, shit, man. <laughs> but I mean, like, we were uh, about Kool Aid. Ten minutes. Like, ago. I love the the. I can't. His name is kind of escaping me right now. But the linebacker that went to the Bengals that was trying to kill like Antonio Brown and stuff. I Perfect. love that dude coming Perfect. out of college. Yeah. He was Perfect. a head case as well. So, and we didn't draft him, and then so. Yeah, it happens. Um, he gave Antonio Brown CTE, dude. Dude, for sure. For yeah. real. CTE is PN, man. <laughs> dude, yeah. his Twitter, by okay. the way, is fire. Um, AB? Yes. Dude. Yeah, it's just, it's, so it's wild. <laughs> it's a yeah. trip. If you haven't looked up Antonio Brown's Twitter, it's just like drawing. Not if you're a child. Twitter. If you are a child, do not look this up. Oh, yeah. Like adults only. <laughs> yeah. Like, but Anything also, you kind of have to be. That Kanye uh, West is probably thinking Antonio Brown puts on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Ronald. Yeah. Right. I don't even know where we were. I think we were at seven. <laughs> seven, <laughs> yeah, seven. Okay, did everybody give their sevens? Mm, wait, yeah. hold on. No, 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 don't I think no, no, so. no you got to do Brian to Simon yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody finish up number sevens, and then we're gonna move on. Catching straight. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, Brian, who's your seven? <laughs> Ennis Rakestraw. Okay. Oh, okay. I have uh, Mari Lassiter. Okay. You missed my, just All missed right. my list. Jake, you gave your seven? Yep, that was Max Melton. Okay, yep, okay. All right, number eight. I want to touch on this. I have two guys, but I want to give this guy a little bit of credit and a little bit of love strictly for one of the connections. So number eight is where I have Elijah Jones. Oh, um, he's from Boston College, and Halfley was announced as the defensive coordinator when I was down at the Senior Bowl. And I, Jake, and I'm like, I'm like Jake, I'm like, I need to know if there's anybody from Boston College here. And lo and behold, Elijah Jones was there. The next day, I was waiting after practice, and I'm standing there, and I got my Wisco Fanatics T-shirt on. Thank, thank you to Wisco Ball for for sending me a bunch that I could wear down there. Elijah Jones saw the outline of Wisconsin on my shirt lit up. The biggest smile I saw from anybody while I was down there, including Max Melton talking about Bo Melton's breakout. <laughs> Elijah Jones was so excited to talk to me as a person from Wisconsin after hearing about Jeff Halfley getting the defensive coordinator job. So outside of that, obviously the familiarity with Jeff Halfley, Elijah Jones is six one and a half, uh, 185 pounds. Like it's, Decent size for a corner, actually. Yeah. Um, he had eight pass breakups, five interceptions, and a forced fumble. Uh, a 9.4 missed tackle percentage, which is pretty low. Um, and I get he's playing at Boston College, but he allowed 13 receptions on 40 targets. That's 32.5 completion percentage. And an 18.1 passer rating. Jesus. That is stupid low. <laughs> How many targets? 40. <laughs> like, you could probably just throw the ball. What, at the what is it? Throw, you throw it at the dirt, it's like a 33 or something? <laughs> yeah. 
Like if you just throw it at the dirt in front of you, it's like yeah. 33. Yeah. That's disgusting. Eight pass breakups, five interceptions. He also had nine on, run stops. He did that on 40 targets. 40 targets on 13 catches. He had to have like five or six interceptions. Five interceptions. Hey. Eight pass breakups. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he also played 2,736 career snaps. ACC is not like a slub conference no, either. They, they it's it's not good. bad. That's that's impressive. I mean, they play, don't they play NC? Yeah, Are they NC, not, don't they play uh, the and then, and yeah, and then you got Duke is starting to actually get a little bit of traction. Yeah. Um, not Tennessee. Did um, they play Notre Dame this year? I'm just, you know what? I'm just gonna pull it up now because now I'm drawing blanks. I'm just gonna add something about Elijah Jones. He made my list, not yet, but he's down a little bit lower. You know, him being six one and a half or six two, he has a forty two and a half inch vertical. Wow. Oh. Yeah, bro. <laughs> he's <laughs> he, he's oh. actually like oh. good. He's actually good. I enjoyed he's, watching his film. He's yeah. a he's a very very fluid athlete, and his ball skills are elite, bro. He finds the ball and he go, goes and gets the ball. Obviously, anywhere because he could jump out of the damn gym. So, yeah, I big think, fan. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I peeked at him. Yeah, yeah definitely. When we're done, look him up. So, uh, Boston College this year they played Florida State. They lost yep. by two points. Mm-hmm. They played Louisville, who ended up ranked in the top fifteen for a lot of the season. Um, they played Virginia, Army, Georgia Tech. They played Connecticut, who's got some guys that are going to be in the NFL. Syracuse, Virginia Tech, Pitt, uh, Miami, and SMU in their bowl game. So a pretty pretty decent schedule. Mm -hmm. So Elijah Jones introducing the the familiarity with with Jeff Halfley. And I'm same with you, Simon. I didn't really even have him on my list. No, dude, I would I would love to see him in Green Bay. Immediately when I when Tyler and I were talking, found the name. I was like, I wrote the name down in my Packer section. So I'm like, I gotta watch this guy when we do our corners. And he just ended up making the list. He was he's a good player. He's got good fun film. Yeah. All righty, Jake. Who is your number eight? Uh, that's where I have DJ James out of Auburn. Okay. Uh, Simon, number eight. Damn, that's crazy. Sorry, I was looking at. I'll let you show him stuff. Uh, Dude, his stat. I, I got, I got, not I, I got uh, number eight, is T- TJ Tampa. Okay. Uh, Bryant, number eight. Max Melton. Okay. Uh, number nine is where I have TJ Tampa. And you guys have him a little bit higher, and I could see it. Like, I actually think he'd be pretty solid. Uh, Jake, who is your number nine? That is where I have Elijah Jones. Okay. Uh, Simon, number nine. I this is where I have Mike uh strain still. What's sorry, oh, Sainer still? Sainer, Sainer still. Thank you. Sorry, I misread it. Uh, so he's my guy, and uh, when I kind of chose him because I, I loved his game. I, um, when Tyler and I were talking, if this dude was like three or four inches taller, he'd be in one of the top, you know, top three four corners taken this year yep he's uh 23 years old 5'9 182 pounds and he has a five or eight five one ras and really the only reason it's that low is because of his size because he's short because <laughs> he's short um but this dude is a fiery competitor uh played mostly in the slot uh, with over 400 snaps this last year, a lot of completion percentage of 58, a pass rating of 71.8, a lot of 412 yards. He had six forced incompletions and six interceptions, and he really excelled in zone coverage. Uh, pros, excellent reaction speed. Why did I? Wow, I'm not even going to tell you what I, was... I did. <laughs> Acceleration and closing ability. Uh, he's a very physical player. He really looks out to go after contact. And um, he's, like I said, he's a, just a fierce competitor. Uh, the cons, uh, he lacks elite long speed, uh, loses contain to the sideline and run defense, and the limit in size and strength can really present some challenges with some of the bigger receivers. Steve asks, do you fellas take the Packers thresholds into account with your rankings? You probably told us before. Um what do you mean? I like don't. Thresholds? I I don't either. 
Well, Simon, you had Nate Wiggins, number one, knowing that yeah. we're not taking him, right? I, I did adjust it a little bit because I didn't think we would take him. So that's why I had Nate Wiggins at like three or four or whatever I had. Um, so I took it into account a little bit. but So what I would say as far as the Packers are concerned with our rankings is I don't I don't do my rankings as like here are my top twelve best fits at the position for the Packers. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but I will say if I'm looking at say, say I hadn't used attitude to decide to put Nate Wiggins over Kool Aid McKinstry, but if I was looking at two guys and say one of them was a better fit, this is probably going to happen with running backs. To be honest with you, yeah, probably going to happen with running backs. So I'm looking at two running backs and I'm like, okay, this guy is similar to Josh Jacobs versus this guy is similar to AJ Dillon. Which one are we going to need to replace sooner? Like, I'm going to put the AJ Dillon guy, the AJ Dillon, similar play style ahead of him. Like, if we're looking at my big thing with running backs, I'm going to be looking for a guy who's reliable and short yardage. So, if I have a guy who's maybe shiftier and smaller versus a guy who's really good in goal line situations, like that'll probably be a tiebreaker for him. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna build my rankings strictly off of that. And honestly, I don't really agree with that. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for like that a little smaller back to give the not that like Jacobs is a slub in the passing game but like I'm I might put a little guy that might be more Aaron Jones-esque ahead of like a Braylon Allen who's like a bigger back what about like a uh what about like a third down typical receiving type back yeah and I, I might l- put a little more like I, I mean, it really goal. depends. There's a lot I of things think we'll that... need in this draft. Is I think we'll, if we're gonna grab grab a running back, I think it. I don't want to say it'll be a tweener, but I think it'll be an Aaron Jones size type of player. Yeah, um, but my I mean, thing, like when I was looking at free agents, like short yardage for me was a big thing because AJ Dillon's big. Like we needed him to be able to push the pile, to move the chains, to get in the end zone. If you're running the ball inside the five yard line, that's why I wanted Gus Edwards. That's why he was my number one free agent running back target. And again, like you said, Josh Jacobs isn't a slouch, but for me, I'm looking at like who's going to be RB two, and that's that why game. I want. That's why I wanted Antonio Gibson. That's totally fair. Totally fair. That is actually. Um, fair. Steve says Sainra still is an absolute stud, pound for pound. Yeah, yep, I agree. I, I think mean, he's like, if you're looking at pure football player standpoint, he's probably one of the like, I don't know, the top 10, 15, 20 guys in the is draft. Is he five nine or five ten? He's five nine, dude. It's not like close. Yeah. <laughs> I would say the fact that he plays a slot, it could be okay. But you started to see us put Christian Watson, who's six four, in the slot, and that's, that, and that's kind of like yeah. why he's a little lower see, ranked on my rankings. Is like Green Bay is not going to draft Saint still. You go ahead, Tyler. You can say what you want to say. The the Packers are elite at moving guys around. I'll just say this: the NFL is kind of turning into the NBA in, in this sense, where they call it positionless basketball. Yeah. There's not guys that are just strictly slot guys a lot anymore. Yep. That's why I said what I said about defense when I did my live on Monday is base defense really is a two, four, five. It's nickel defense because you're always in the nickel. So that's why you have to have two guys in the middle that can, you know, especially in run defense that can demand a double team or beat their guy one-on-one. You have to have that. Otherwise you're not going to be a successful run defense. You have to have linebackers that can shed blockers which we're going to talk about linebackers next week, so that'll be exciting. But those are things that you have to be able to do in the NFL. And absolutely, especially it started with Devontae Adams, where Matt Le- – or, yeah, what am I talking about? I got confused for a second. We're talking about Devontae Adams. I would, they moved him around a lot in the slot, and, and Matt LaFleur got really used to that. That's why I think he got so good at moving Christian Watson into the slot because he figured out you don't have to be a 5 down quick guy to get, to get open. And I'm just going to tell you right now, Dontavian Wicks is about to feast from the slot, dude. And then you, then you throw a guy like Jaden Reed in the mix who can line up anywhere. Yeah, I like him on the outside a little bit more, to be honest with you. Well, I, I mean, we, talked about when we, did our, when we had these conversations last year, and we're talking about wide receivers, and we're talking about Jaden Reed, and we bring up contested catches, and it's like, as Badgers fans, we have PTSD, and now <laughs> I'm not going to say something else. Now we have it on our side. <laughs> So it's yeah, that's where we're at. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just I just think I know where you're going. <laughs> did I did I get everybody's number nine? No. Yeah. Okay. Simon, did I get your number nine? 
Sorry, I was you're... looking at uh, Jaden Reed's slot snaps compared to outside last year. Gotcha. When we talk about something that I don't know, I just immediately look it up. Uh, number <laughs> nine. Get yeah, it was uh, Mike's uh, string. Okay, stuff. that's where he had Samer still. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brian, yeah. who's your number nine? That's right. Uh, Renardo Green. Okay. Um, number 10. 10 is where I have Max Melton. Uh, Jake, who's your number 10? That's where I have Rake Shaw Jr. Okay. Um, do you guys want someone who knows a lot about mid? I don't know. Uh, Simon, uh, you're for sure. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, uh, M- uh, basketball or MLB draft? Uh, we've kicked it around. MLB, not quite as much. Um, That's a pretty dry draft. It, it takes so long for guys. Isn't that like to 20 rounds? 25 yeah. rounds or something like that. It's like Golly. the NHL draft, dude. So Tyler and I recap the the Brewers draft picks. We've done that before. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Um, we, don't... we we've done that for the Bucks as well, but right. uh, we've never really dove deep in because you know since we we've started this show, the Bucks have kind of been either picking uh, it, it in the late first round or late second round, or they just don't have a pick. <laughs> so I don't really know what the point of you know scouting guys that are ranked sixty ninth and seventy in the draft, uh, what that would be worth. Um, didn't you guys do like a, a NBA draft thing a couple of years ago where you liked prospect, uh, prospects? Maybe it was last year. I can't, I can't uh, remember. We probably did. Someone. Yeah, we we picked like, like I remember we each picked three yeah, guys like that we really liked. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's weird because I actually picked uh, can't think of it how to say his last name. The guy from Kentucky, Oscar uh, she Meyer Wiener. Wiener. Yeah, I actually picked him on my list, and then he was the one that started the. <laughs> The Giannis stuff with the ball this year, so I was like, uh, I gotta rip that page up now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dustin, send the send the show page a message, and we can talk. Yeah. All right. Um, Brian, who's your number ten? <laughs> That's probably Mike Sanders still. Okay. Uh, number eleven, I have Kyrie Jackson. Uh, Jake, who's your number eleven? Uh, that's where I have Cam Hart. Okay. Uh, Simon, 11. I hate you, Brian. <laughs> Number 11 is uh, Kyrie Jackson. Nice. There we go. We have a consensus. Uh, we have a consensus number 11. That's the there you go. I'll take that. <laughs> Brian, who's your number 11? DJ James. All right. Number 12, I have Chris Abrams Drain. Um, Jake, ah. who is your number 12? That's right. I have Sane Russell. Okay. Simon, number 12? Max Melton. And Brian, oh, wow. number 12. Chris Abrams Drain. Nice consensus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That that does it for defensive backs. Uh, we will have 11 players total that we have consensus on in these 24 players that we just discussed. <laughs> but uh, next week we do have uh, running backs and linebackers. That is going to be our final uh, position group series part of this. Um, so after that, there is one more Friday between then and the draft. That week will be our live mock draft episode. That's going to be April 19th. Uh, Mike Spofford is still slated to join us for that. So okay. we're going to do some live mock drafts with the editor of Packers.com, who's been on the show a bunch of times before, if you've watched. Um, and that'll be a lot of fun. And it's usually that's where we get to kind of show off some of the other knowledge about guys that we didn't talk about. Um, even though the four of us all have two players each that we discussed, we obviously had a top 12. So there's other guys that we – We've taken notes on and studied, uh, but just aren't part of our thing because otherwise we'd be here for four hours every Friday night, um, each of us talking about 12 players that we all scouted. And there's more than just the top 12 that don't make the list. So between the mock drafts and the actual draft, which we will be live on Thursday and Friday, um, maybe we'll get hardcore enough to do Saturday. But um, Thursday and Friday for sure, and that's when we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other prospects as well. So join us again next Friday. And then Jake and I will be live again on Wednesday talking about the Packers, not the Packers, the Bucks and the Brewers on Wednesday. And then also a week from Tuesday is going to be our next watch party. Jake and I will be doing a pregame and postgame show for the Brewers and Padres. And then that is going to be part of our Patreon subscription starting in – actually, it's already started now, but um, those watch parties will be part of our Patreon subscription starting in May. And if you join our Patreon, that's when you get to pick the games that we will cover in May. Uh, so 
if you stuck around with us for the whole show or part of the show or commented along, we appreciate it. And yeah, we will see. Um, we will see you guys Wednesday and next Friday. So, spoiler later. alert: I'm taking a wider receiver during the mock draft. You would. <laughs> 